Light room point color is one of those revolutionary features that make color adjustments so much better. And in this video, I'll show you everything you need to know. It's important to use point color at a very specific time in your workflow, so stick around to find out why. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Mark Dumbleton, and I'm a professional wildlife photographer from South Africa. I publish videos every Sunday about all things relating to wildlife photography. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can find Lightroom's new point color in the color mixer tab here. You've got the usual HSL mixer panel and then clicking on point color brings you up into the point color panel. Now, previously in Lightroom, we were able to adjust colors using the HSL sliders here. Easy to do, you just adjust the sliders, but the problem with this is it's a very global change. You can't target a specific color as much as you can using the Lightroom point color. So how point color works is you've got a panel here and you've got a little eyedropper tool. Now to start off, you now select a color. So let's take this purple in this flower here. Click that. And once we've clicked that color, you now see a whole bunch of different options. On this graph here, it shows us the color we have selected and the range that we can change it. That's the luminance. And under here, you can see hue shift, saturation shift, and luminance shift. So now you can adjust the color that you've selected using those three sliders. But now in point color, we've got an extra set of tools here. We can change the range and we can actually select the hue range, saturation range, and luminance range of the color we have selected. Clicking this little visualize range box here allows us to see what we have selected. So you'll see it'll desaturate the entire image except for the color we have selected. So you can see the color we have chosen has been left there. And this helps us identify the range of colors we want to change. So let's choose a different color. I'll click that tool there and sample a new color. So let's take this green, for example. There's a lot of different greens in this image. So now I've clicked that and you can see it's now made a second color block there. If you want to go back and edit the first one, you just click on that block there. But now we're going to go into the green here and let's visualize the range to see what we have selected. Now you can see it hasn't selected a whole bunch of the other greens. It's mainly selected a very refined part of that green spectrum there. So now if you click the range slider, you can see it's gradually increasing or decreasing the amount of that green selected. So I'm going to increase the range to 100. And now this hue range, saturation range or luminance range allows us to refine the selection a bit more. So we can click and drag and move this color range here. We can adjust these sliders to choose more green or less green. You can now see some part of the leopard has been selected because it's now going into that almost yellow range there. So we want to back that off. We really want to target just the background greens there. Now the saturation range and the luminance range allows us to select a very highly saturated part of the green or a very low saturation in that green. And similar with the luminance here, it allows us to select the darker greens or the lighter greens. Now in this image, I want to select most of the greens in the background because I want to desaturate those greens a little bit. So I think I'm going to leave the luminance range like this. I think the saturation range, I'm going to take the whole range there. And then this green range, I think it's pretty much selected what I want. I might choose to remove this yellow from the selection. So I can actually click and drag the slider here just to remove. So you can see it's starting to desaturate that area there. So this allows us incredible control over the colors we want to target. Now in this example, let me just turn this off here. I'm actually going to make this orange or this yellow here appear a bit more green, just to simplify the background a little bit. So let's just click visualize range there. And I'm going to desaturate the green just a little bit. Turn that visualize range back on to see what it's doing to the entire image. Something around about there. Okay, so then let's adjust this orange patch in the background. So let's click that. And, and adjust that color, visualize range. So now we're running into a problem. I want to adjust that color in the background, but I don't want to change the leopard at all. So now what we can actually do is point color is available in the masking panel. I'm going to delete this swatch color here. You just right click and say delete swatch. If you right click, you can actually choose to delete them all. I'm going to leave those two there. So now I'm going to go into masks. As you can see, I've already pre-edited this image. So now I'm going to select my subject. So let's see what that's done. It's done a pretty decent job. I'm just going to subtract a brush just to get rid of some of this area that it's selected here, or something like that. I might clean this up a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that mask to choose the background. Oh, I can see it's now selected some of the nose here. Just get rid of that. 
and a little bit of the ear there, but I'm not going to worry about that now. And I'm going to then go down to point color and choose that color that I wanted. Again, visualize range. Let's just click that there. And this allows us to see what we're dealing with. Now, the mask is going to protect the leopard from being changed. So don't worry about the fact that that's now showing. So let's target that orange. I don't want to change any of the green in the background. I just want to target that area there very specifically. So I'm going to decrease this range and get rid of some of those greens. So I think that does it for now. Now, one thing you can do to change, well, there's actually two things. To change this color, you can either adjust the hue, saturation, or luminance sliders here, or you can actually click on this actual graph to change that color. So you can see this area here is where that color is sitting in the color spectrum. But now if we click and drag, over you can see we can actually change that to green there if you want to have a less saturated green you can click and drag down here and you can see the sliders moving at the bottom here so this is a really excellent way to fine tune that color you don't have to play with sliders so much you just click and drag and move this around here so i want to nicely desaturate green there and i think the luminance is fine these little black dots is where the initial color was and this white circle here is where the color is now so you can see it hasn't changed the leopard because it's been protected by the mask but now you can see that that color has now changed to green so let's just turn that mask off you can see the color there is a more browny orangey color and now it's more of a green color so now what i want to do is i want to adjust the leopard on its own i don't want to adjust anything in the background i'm happy with where the background is sitting so i'm going to go back to this mask we created because that is a subject mask inverted so i'm just going to click and duplicate and invert the mask to bring that back to my subject and then go down to point color click and choose a color of the leopard that i want to change click visualize range because we want to see what we're doing so now we can see it's a nicely desaturated color but i want to make it a bit more saturated and a bit more slightly towards the red spectrum now, one important thing to remember when using point color, always try and use point color as close to the end of your workflow as possible. We've initially chosen this green and this purple based on this image. Now, if we go and cool the image down, little slight change there and we tweak the white balance. If we go back to point color, this green is actually not the exact green now that we have chosen previously, it's changed. So if we click to visualize range, before we had most of the background selected. Now you can actually see there's parts of this background that aren't selected anymore because of that white balance change that we made previously. So to avoid this issue, make sure to always adjust your point color closest to the end of your workflow and try not to adjust any color once you have done that. Before finishing this video, I want to let you know about new Photoshop sharpening actions I created to bring out insane detail in your photos. If you watch this video here, you can get them for free, as well as learn about how to maximize sharpness on your wildlife photographs.